The following pages contain the first and only description of the realistic universe of land, water, oxygen, and vegetation, where human and other forms of animal life abound. This is not a work of fiction, nor is it a technical analysis of anything. It is a simple recital of fact, which transcends the most elaborate fiction ever conceived. It is diametrically opposed to the assumptions and the mathematical conclusions of theorists and technicians throughout the ages. It is truth. These pages describe the physical land routes from the earth to every land area of the universe about us, which is all land. Such routes extend from beyond the North Pole and South Pole so-called ends of the earth as decreed by the theory. It will here be adequately shown that there are no northern or southern limits to the earth. It will thereby be shown where movement straight ahead from the pole points, and on the same level as the earth, permits of movement into celestial land areas appearing up, or out from the earth. An original treatise basic to this book was written, and has been expounded at American universities, 1927 to 19. Since then, the U.S. Naval Research Bureau and the U.S. Navy's exploratory forces have conclusively confirmed the work's principal features. Since December 12, 1928, U.S. Navy polar expeditions have determined the existence of indeterminable land extent beyond both pole points, out of bounds of the assumed isolated globe Earth, as postulated by the Copernican theory of 1543. On January 13, 1956, as this book was being prepared, a U.S. Naval Air Unit penetrated to the extent of 2,300 miles beyond the assumed South Pole and of the Earth. That flight was always over land and water and ice. For very substantial reasons, the memorable flight received negligible press notice. The United States and more than 30 other nations prepared unprecedented polar expeditions for 1957 and 1958 to penetrate land now proved to extend without limit beyond both pole points. My original disclosure of an unknown land beyond the poles, in 1926 and 1928, was captioned by the press as more daring than anything Jules Verne ever conceived. Today, 30 years later, the United States, Russia, Argentina, and other nations have bases on that realistic land extent, which is beyond the Earth. It is not space, as theory dictated, it is land and water of the same order, that comprise known Earth territory. This work provides the first account, of why it is unnecessary to attempt shooting up, or out, from the terrestrial level for journey to any of the astronomically named celestial land areas. It relates why such attempt would be futile. These pages present incontrovertible evidence that the same atmospheric density of this Earth prevails throughout the entire universe. Such a feature proves that, except for the presence of a gaseous sky envelope and underlying oxygen content equivalent to that of the Earth, we could never observe the luminous celestial areas designated as star, or planet. It is shown here that in a determination of realistic cosmic values the observed luminous areas of the universe about us represent celestial sky areas, and that they are as continuous and connected as all areas of this Earth's continuous and connected sky. Hence it is shown that there are no globular and isolated bodies, to be found throughout the whole universe, they are elements of lens deception. Accordingly, the absence of celestial bodies precludes any possibility of bodies circling or ellipsing in space. This work is radically and rightfully opposed to astronomical conclusions of all ages. It depicts the illusions developing from all telescopic observations and photographs of the universe about us. It clearly explains and vividly illustrates why those lens-developed illusions have been mistakenly accepted as facts.
The book is therefore unparalleled in the long history of man's attempted interpretation and recording of the universe about us. It projects man's first understanding of the factual and endless universe, which contains human life throughout its vast length and width regardless of all abstract theory to the contrary. The discovery of new worlds, in matter as in mind, is but the logical outcome of an infinite universe. The changing scene 1927 to 1957, 1927 August. If it is so the world will know of it. William Carton O'Connell, Archbishop of Boston 19, 28 July. Janini, since words cannot confirm you, words cannot deny you. It is your work, and only you can give it. Dr. Robert Andrews Millikan of President. California Institute of Technology Pasadena Janini, if you prove your concept it will establish the most complete physical continuity in the history of man. The Reverend Professor Jerome Riard, physicist and seismologist of Santa Clara University, California The memorable December 12th discovery of heretofore unknown land beyond the South Pole, by Captain Sir George Hubert Wilkins demands that science change the concept it has held for the past 400 years concerning the southern contour of the earth. Dombruva, Russian Explorer 19, 29 Physical continuity of the universe more daring than anything Jules Verne ever conceived. 19, 47 February. I'd like to see that land beyond the pole. That area beyond the pole is the center of the great unknown. Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd, USN, before his seven-hour flight over land beyond the North Pole. 19, 55 April 6. Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd to establish satellite base at the South Pole. International News Service April 25th. Soviet scientists to explore moon surface with caterpillar tank. November 28th. This is the most important expedition in the history of the world. Admiral Byrd, before departing to explore land beyond the South Pole 19, 56 January 13th. On January 13th members of the United States expedition accomplished a flight of 2,700 miles from the base at McMurdo Sound, which is 400 miles west of the South Pole, and penetrated a land extent of 2,300 miles beyond the pole. Radio announcement, confirmed by the press February 5th March 13th. The present expedition has opened up a vast new land. Admiral Byrd, after returning from land beyond the South Pole 19, 57 that enchanted continent in the sky, land of everlasting mystery. Admiral Byrd only dreams are true the tangible and real, on which our lives are based, was yesterday's ideal, a rosy picture traced by some quaint visionary and practical, half-crack painting his fancies eerie, and now it's solid fact. Whatever we hold stable, dependable and sane was once a hopeful fable of castles built in Spain. Before the fact, the fancy, before the deed, the dream, that builds by necromancy the hard, material scheme. So all your towers that shimmer, your lamps that light the sky, were once a tiny glimmer within some seer's eye. Time makes our empires scatter, but we shall build anew. For only visions matter, and only dreams.